In this episode, we're going to be talking about how to create transformation in easy and practical ways every single day. Welcome to Thriving Launch with Louise Congdon and Kamala Chambers, the show for heart-centered entrepreneurs who want it all. Five days a week, we bring you different segments to inspire you to live a life of freedom. We interview the leading experts in the field of business, health, and love. Be sure to check out Training Tuesdays, where we give you a clear action plan to grow your own business. Maybe you can relate to this. When I was a full-time coach, keep repeating the same things to people over and over and over again, and it got to be kind of draining, and I wasn't really enjoying what I was doing anymore. So what I decided to do was record the things that I had to tell clients over and over and over again, and then I packaged those recordings together and sold them as an online course. If you're interested in creating and selling your own online course, head over to thrivinglaunch.com, and I have a free training for you on how to create and make passive income through your own online course. Jack Canfield said, you don't meet people like Dina every day. And that is the case. We've got Dina Proctor on the show today, and she is a mind body connection coach. She's a business productivity coach, inspirational speaker, best-selling author, and we're really glad to have her here talking about her three by three meditation and how to create transformation in these bite-sized pieces. Hey, are you ready to launch? I am ready to launch. All right. We're so <laughs> grateful that you're here because this is something that we all think about. I think I think we all kind of struggle with like, oh, I know all the things I need to do to get to where I want to be, but I can do them later or I don't have time right now. And we really want to explore with you how transformation doesn't have to be this big daunting thing. So let's talk about that. What do you recommend for people to start their own journey of transformation right away? Mm, Well, I think the biggest factor, well, for me, meditation saved my life. And when I first started meditating, I was suicidal. I was alcoholic. I had been in major clinical depression for more than 10 years. And I didn't, I just couldn't, I couldn't live with alcohol. I couldn't live without it. And I didn't know if I wanted to live or die. Like it was such a bad place to be in. And when I first started meditating, you know, my instruction was to sit still for 20 minutes in the morning and focus on my breath. But I was just physically, mentally, emotionally incapable of doing anything near that. So I would sit for three minutes at a time, which was what worked for me. And I could do that several times a day to kind of make 20 minutes total, I would sit for six or seven times a day. And from that little practice, these little three minute breaks, and I didn't believe in any kind of transformation. I didn't even, I've never heard, I, at that point, I'd never heard of law of attraction. I didn't know what any of this stuff was. I didn't believe in God. All I was doing was I was just kind of sitting in this place of like, I cannot figure it out. But if there's an answer out there, I'm open to it. And it was like this open kind of willingness in a place of desperation. And from that space, just in these little three minutes, little insights were born. I had experiences in higher consciousness and it was like blissful, grounded, amazing. And from that space, you know, like feel like my, I know a lot about neuroscience. And when I wrote my book, I interviewed Dr. Bruce Lipton, who's an amazing neuroscientist. We've had him on the show and Uh, that was one of our favorites. We love him. (laughs) He's amazing. Him and Jack Campbell are are like my- We've had Jack on the show too. (laughs) (laughs) He was the one that first told me that I could write a book and stood behind me as I did it. But anyway, with with people that, that knew what they were talking about, knew what they were doing to tell me and to back up and to explain to me how these short bursts of focused meditation several times a day literally rewire you from the inside out. The cells of my body are different. My thought patterns are different. I'm sure if you took a scan of my brain back then and a scan of my brain now, it would be totally different. So understanding that this is, it's not just a woo-woo out there, oh, happy la-la, you know, that sort of thing. It's like a real grounded, practical way to transform your life. And I tell you that I hit rock bottom, not because that's something that everybody has to do, but to say like, I was in that place and transformation at the deepest level happened for me. So imagine what it could do for you. 
Love it. Well, I'd love to hear a little bit more about some of the practical steps, like things that we can do on a daily basis to incorporate meditation and transformation into our lives. Absolutely. Well, you know, whenever I used to try uh, to take on a new habit or a new practice, whether it was, this didn't happen to me with meditation, but it could be with other people. You know, you want to join the gym, you want to take on a different eating habit, you want to get get yourself healthier, something like that. Like we have this little bit of a New Year's resolution attitude about it. We think, okay, I'm going to bite the bullet. I'm going to discipline myself. I've got the willpower. I can do this. And we have this kind of like white knuckle willpower type of pull yourself up by the bootstraps attitude. And the way that my transformation happened was exactly the opposite of that. So I want to help people understand to let go of the overwhelmingness of it. Don't think of it as like, oh my gosh, I have to transform my life all at once. Like this new year's resolution thing, just commit to playing full out with the new practice for seven days at a time. Because if you string together seven days and then 14 and then up to 21 and 28, that's when patterns really start happening. And that's when I have felt, it's right at the two and a half week mark for me where my reality, my outer reality, whether it's my body, my relationships, my financial situation, when I'm spending my, I call it three by three meditation, three minutes, three times a day, when I spend that in a specific focus for as little as about two and a half weeks, that's about the amount of time when my outer reality shifts. And so to bring it down in a practical way, like I always tell people, put reminders in your phone because you think you're going to remember to do it and you're not, you're going to forget and it's going to be eight o'clock at night. You're going to be too tired. So putting reminders in your phone is a great way to start and setting a timer. So you're not kind of peaking during the meditation time, setting a timer for three minutes or five minutes or 20 minutes or whatever time feels suitable for you. And then during that meditation time, you know, like when you're playing full out, commit to a practice, but just commit to playing full out for those seven days. So if you want to do three times a day or once a day in the morning, whatever, just commit to playing full out for those seven days. And the reason that that's so powerful is because if a lot of people get to, we start out with a lot of steam and we get to, you know, like day three, day four, and it's like, you know, maybe I'll just kind of skip it or I don't really have that. We start out strong and then we sort of, you know, peter out a little bit. But if you tell yourself, I'm only doing this for seven days and you get to the three or four day mark and you feel, you know, a little bit of waning of the energy, you can remind yourself, I'm only doing this for seven days. I can do, it's okay. Like I can commit and bring myself to doing this um, for three or four more days to stay through it. And then um, in terms of what to do in the meditation itself, for those couple of minutes, a lot of times, like I, I call the first seven to 14 days, sometimes even the first 21 days, it's like a, a practice of weeding the garden. But so many times we have negative thoughts, like say that we have a negative thought about, oh, I'm never going to get out of debt or, oh, I'm never going to lose this weight. And we know, had that you know, thought. I wanted to say something ahead, too sorry. about <laughs> the, the small, small incremental ways of doing a goal because it's, that's really powerful. A lot of people, you know, when, when I've talked to uh, fitness experts over at the gym, uh, I'm a big, you know, big believer in health and going to the gym. I absolutely love it. And I talk to the guys at the gym a lot and I asked, you know, I've talked to them about like new year's resolutions and how many people start coming in. And they told me that memberships skyrocket, you know, at the new year, that's, that's when you need to be at the gym if you work there because you're going to sell memberships, you're going to sell packages. <laughs> and they've every single one of them, without a doubt, every single trainer I've ever talked to has told me, you know, the people will start coming in for maybe the first few weeks, first month or two even of the new year. And then after that, you don't really see those people anymore, but they've bought, you know, these programs and packages, but they just kind of seem to disappear. And I think the big thing about it is that we make these goals and we think, you know what, I'm going to lose 30, 40, 60, I'm going to lose a hundred pounds or whatever it is that, you know, people have these goals and I make them so big that they're daunting. And then they've been working out for a couple of weeks and they're like, I lost a pound. Like, how am I, how am I going to get to that hundred pounds, you know, and, but, and, and then that brings me, you know, kind of full circle or kind of close to full circle here to something I read by Tim Ferriss where, you know, he was looking at research and, and goal setting stuff and what he noticed or what he read in some of the studies is that when people set really small goals and they're able to reach those goals, there's a lot more momentum. So instead of hundred pounds, when people say, I'm going to lose three pounds, they reach that goal. And so then they go, well, I'm going to yeah. lose six. And they reach that goal. 
But what a lot of us tend to do is, you know what, I, I heard that uh, Dr. Eben Alexander, one of our guests, he meditates two hours a day. So we might hear that and go, and I know this is something I kind of thought about after our interviews. I went, well, I should meditate for like an hour. Mm. I and mean, that guy's doing two. <laughs> uh, how powerful would it be if I started doing, you know, two hours? If, but but I'll, I'll, I'll break it to an hour. But that's still for me like a lot. Like right now I'm doing 10 minutes a day and it's fantastic. I have a little app on my phone. I have a reminder that pops up every morning and that's what I do. And I've made it simple. Uh, and, and that's what I recommend to people. So for me, a 10 minute meditation is fantastic. Uh, I have done full, you know, like eight, nine hour day long meditation sessions, Mm -hmm. but those were at special retreats. This isn't like a regular lifestyle kind of thing for me. So I really think setting these short goals is a way to go. Oh, I love it. I love that you've had that experience too. It's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I'd love to hear a little bit more about these real bite-sized pieces, like one practical thing that we can do right now. Okay, great. So where I was kind of going with the whole meditation, one, one thing that we can do, first of all, if it feels like you have no time uh, to meditate, that's an indicator that meditation needs to be in your life because we have these hectic, stressful lives. And so even if it feels like, oh my gosh, three minutes is too much, or even one minute is too much, we can find tasks. That's something that we can do wherever we are. We can be out with a group of people. We can be sitting in a meeting. We can be on a phone call. We can be doing a number of things, washing the dishes, cooking dinner, and be able to, as we're in that activity, take three deep breaths and just feel the warmth in the area around our heart expand and relax, you know? So sometimes it can be something that simple that can get you there. And a lot of times I think something like a mantra or a visual or a phrase or a word can really help ground people. I have um, a couple of clients that wear like a, a bracelet or a necklace, a charm that when they grab onto that, that's their anchor to be able to center into that place inside of themselves. That's something that they can do. Um, and then, you know, like getting up five or 10 minutes earlier or going to bed five or 10 minutes later. It doesn't have to be a huge commitment of time, but just to take that time, the beginning, middle and end of the day, you know, like I feel we nourish our bodies three times a day. Let's nourish our souls three times a day. So those are some little tiny things that you can bring into your everyday life that really won't impact you in terms of your time, but can really make a huge difference in the way that you feel and the way that you are in the world around you. Absolutely agree. I mean, and just the power of three deep breaths is amazing. Mm. So thank you for reminding us all to do that. Um, Before we close out today, what is the last thing that you want to make sure the audience, the thriving launchers walk away with? Mm. I think one of the most important things that I feel like when I was in my lowest point, I needed to hear, but it was hard for me to hear at that time, was that there are so many people out there willing to help and willing to hold the lanterns for us and willing to you know, bring us to the next level if we will just let ourselves be guided, let ourselves seek that, let ourselves be open to that, let ourselves be vulnerable so that we can hold hope that somebody out there gets it, somebody out there understands where we are. And that transformation does not have to be something that's hard and daunting. It can happen in these short little bursts because one builds on another and builds on another, you know, like picture termites taking down a whole big house. It's like these little tiny things have this power to take down a big structure. And that can be these short bursts of meditation can take down huge structures of negative programming. It's so incredibly powerful. Just these little bits couple minutes here and a couple minutes there at a time. When I was trying to get over my social anxiety, it felt like such a daunting practice. It felt like er, an exercise, I guess, for me, because it was an exercise of coming out of my shell. It was an exercise of overcoming social anxiety. And one of the exercises that I did, it lasted about maybe two or three minutes tops. I actually got it to a point where it was really only more like one minute at the most. And what I would do is I would just sit down And I would think about an emotion that I wanted to experience more often. So for me, or a feeling, right? So I wanted to feel more at peace. And I would think of a time in my life when I felt that really powerfully. In my life, meditation and yoga is where I find the most sense of calmness. So I put myself in the space where I was at my yoga practice. And I have a very particular memory of laying there when you're laying down on your back and just feeling this kind of like echoing laughter surging through my whole body. It was like something very beautiful had awoken up inside me. 
And so every night before I went to bed, I would recall that memory, just close my eyes, breathe in, recall the memory, feel it. And as soon as I felt it pretty good, that was it. I just breathe, you know, just breathe a couple of breaths, feel the emotion, feel the feeling of being really relaxed, breathe out, open my eyes, go to bed. I'd wake up in the morning. I'd think about that time I was in yoga, or I might think about it sometime that I was doing something else that was really peaceful. But I generally had like two or three memories. It wasn't like I'd, I'm always searching for a new memory or a different mm-hmm. one. Or It kept it very simple. And I would recall the memory, breathe in, and then I would breathe out. And that was it just, you know, 30 seconds to a minute every single day. And after a month, my calmness and the shifts that I'd experienced around social anxiety shifted dramatically. And within 30 days, I anchored something very powerful within myself that I can still call on to this day, that if I call that memory, do the breath in that particular way, I can shift my whole physiology. Mm, I believe it. That's amazing. Really powerful. Really, really great. Dina, it's been a pleasure to have you here on the show. Thank you so much for joining us here on Thriving Launch. You gave us some really great practical advice and you also gave us a good reminder that goals really start one bite at a time and that if we can make them simple, then we're more likely to build the momentum to keep stacking and make the goals bigger and bigger. But, you know, big results come from a bunch of small things put together. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Mm, Thank you so much for having me. Totally a joy. You've been listening to the Thriving Launch Podcast. For books and resources related to today's episode, make sure to head over to thrivinglaunch.com. We'll see you there. Be sure to tune into next week's episode where I'm going to teach you how to make money from Facebook and how to make money from Facebook without a website, without a sales page and no complicated tech, simply using Facebook in a purely organic way and it won't cost you a penny. 